Welcome to Electra Online and in this video we're going to take a look at the stellar motion. Now stars relative to us are all in motion. It may not look like that because we look at the stars every night and they appear to be pretty well in the same place relative to each other and relative to us. But yes, most stars do move and in a lot of cases they move differently than the way we do in our own galaxy. And so what happens is, let's say we're observing a star the star could be moving away from us or moving towards us. It could be moving to the right, to the left. Most of the time it's a combination of the two. Like in this example, maybe the motion of the star is like this, which means that it has a component of the velocity that's radially either away or towards us, and also there's a component of the velocity which, which is directly perpendicular to that radial arm. So we call this the radial velocity, we call this the tangential velocity, that's why we use v sub r and v sub t for radial and tangential. Now what we need to do is we need to be able to figure out what each of those two velocities is. Once we do, the velocity of the star can be found using Pythagorean theorem is equal to the square root of the vertical component squared plus the horizontal component squared, the radial component and the tangential component. So how do we find those two components? Well, the first component, the radial component, can be found by the shift in the wavelengths of the emission spectrum. For example, hydrogen has a, an alpha line at 656.3 nanometers. That line is created when an electron jumps from the second to the third level and then back from the third level back down to the second energy level, emitting a photon of this particular frequency. But if the star is moving either away from us or towards us, that frequency will have shifted. For example, in this case, the, the wavelength may be as high as 658.5 nanometers, indicating that it shifted towards the red. It is red shifted, therefore the star is moving away from us. How fast? Here's the equation. The radial velocity is equal to the speed of light times the ratio of how much that wavelength has shifted divided by the original wavelength. So in this case, that would be equal to 300,000 kilometers per second that is the speed of light, times the difference in the wavelength from 656.3 to 658.5, that's a difference of 2.2 nanometers, and we divide that by the original, what it would be if it was not moving, which is 656.3 nanometers. And that will give us the velocity of that star in a radial direction. So, 300,000 times 2.2 divided by 656.3, and we get 1,005.6 kilometers per second. So 1,005.6 kilometers per second. So we know that star is moving away from us at slightly over 1,000 kilometers per second. Now let's say that we observe the star and we measure where the position is and then a year later we measure it again and we notice that it shifted to the right 12 arc seconds during that year. The way we can then find the tangential velocities to come over here and, okay, this should be tangential, not radial. It is equal to the constant 4.74, and that constant is what we need to be able to use the units the way we do, times the angular distance traveled in a year. In this case, 12 arc seconds in a year, so we multiply that times 12 arc seconds, and then the distance in parsec, and in this case, let's say that the star was 4.5 parsecs away, so we'll put that over there. 4.5 and the answer will come to us in kilometers per second. So let's go ahead and calculate that. 4.74 times 12 times 4.5 and we find that the that the um, tangential velocity is 256.0 kilometers per second. So that would be the velocity in this direction here would be the velocity in that direction. So now to find the total velocity, the velocity of the star, we note that that will be equal to the square root of the radial velocity plus the tangential velocity squared, so that would be equal to the square root of 1,005.6 kilometers per second quantity squared plus 256.0 kilometers per second, and we also square that and so finally, if we square that plus 1,005.6 squared equals, take the square root, and we find that the total velocity of that star is 1,037.7 kilometers per second. That will be V of the star, and that's how we find it. So, any velocity of any object in space 
there's a component that is directly in line or line of sight, which is called the radial velocity, and then there'll be a component perpendicular to that. It could be like this or like that. It's always, it's always perpendicular to us. We can measure that angle, and then we combine the two velocities vectorially like this using Pythagorean theorem, and that's how we find the velocity of any object in the universe.